Hi, everyone. So I'll let, just warn you, I'm getting a, an odd message from YouTube that says I'm not sending enough video. I'm not sure quite what that means. So I thought, well, let's switch it up, get started. Um, I hate to en I hate to end it and then and then you know everybody has to start over again. Oh, so Rose, see me, Rose? I'm waving now. Just it's kind of odd the the uh, messages I've been receiving. Hi, Lynn. So Rose, you're in the southwest. I'm in the northeast. The year, and we're still neighbors. How's that? Oh, <laughs> Rose, you're waving back. I see you, Rose, waving back. <laughs> Rose, you always make me laugh. Okay, so I'm just going to, let's see. Oh, yeah, because you're, Rose, you're on a different um, time than me. And I keep forgetting to put in the um, Eastern Eastern time when I, when I, um, when I put the time in on Facebook. I really, I have to get better at that. Because cause people have no idea where I am. I just assume everybody knows where I am. So thanks for reminding me, Rose. I'll try to be more uh, diligent about um, putting Eastern Standard Time on the, um, on the Facebook. Oh, two hours behind. Oh, so you're, you're just at supper time. Oh, you, you don't call, maybe you don't call it supper time. Dinner time, supper time. The evening meal. One of those things. So, Rose, by the time I get done, I call that bedtime. <clears throat> Okay, so yeah, I I know what time I I am here. <laughs> well, most of the time I know that. Okay, so I put a picture up. Yeah, I'm with you, Rose. Sometimes like six o'clock's way too late. I ate it like five thirty, and I wished I'd eaten at four thirty. So this block that I, I put the picture in of, so this is um, pieces from our book. So where our flying geese is, there's our flying geese. This is the block we did last week, another flying geese and a plain block. And I wanted to talk more, yeah, bedtime, right? I wanted to talk more about how you can piece things together to make them kind of interlocking in a quilt because everything we've made so far will work with each other. And what I mean by that is this, I'll do it this way. This flying geese is four and a half. Uh, uh, I don't know which is easier if I, I'm going to say finished. Uh, no, I'm going to say unfinished because if you measure it, before you sew it in, it's going to be unfinished. So this is four and a half unfinished. This is four and a half unfinished. So this is an eight and a half inch block. So if this is four and a half, this one has to be two and a half, and this one has to be two and a half to get our, now I know two and a half and two and a half makes five, except I have to, there's a seam allowance there that I have to contend with. So we're really working in twos, two, four, we could do six, which would be like this, eight, you could go 10, 12, and that's why I picked the, the um, working on the four inch and the eight inch stuff because it works in twos and that makes it easier, trust me, than working in threes. So if I just take some of my last 
times extra samples. So, so I could put these two beside each other. I could put this four beside each other. Let me make a little more room. So I'll put those four beside each other. And then they would work next to an eight inch block. Don't forget, these are gonna be a little bigger because I don't have this, these seam allowances done. So it's a little bigger until the seam allowance is done. But this patch or this unit would end up being the same size as this. So I could, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try not to confuse you. I'm trying to do my best. So if I, so for example, if I'm working in uh, rows, so I could have, let me move it over there. So I could have this one because this, this flying geese is really the same size as this block right here, it's just longer. So, so I'll pretend I've got one flying geese there and then I can put another one over here. And when I sew those three together, they would match these two and become, um, an eight inch block. So I can offset my rows so I could I could have it like this. So see how I, I mean offset in that this seam is in the middle of this block by either just putting a plain uh, rectangle here or two squares, um, a flying geese or anything so that at some point we come out even. So I can go across my rows and not concern myself with um, having to line up all my seams to the next row and everything would be offset. So I could have, see if I can remove the book up out of the way. Yeah, can you see better there? So I could have this block and obviously these colors don't work together and 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 so forth. But I want you to get the general idea. So I could have these two blocks on one side, and I could have these two blocks on the other side, and my row is still eight and a half. Does that kind of make sense? So if you made all sorts of these block samples that we've been doing and you can start putting things together, that'll give you a, 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 scrappy, a scrappy quilt. If you wanted to do a, um, what we call a two color quilt, so say I wanted it in blues, two color quilt means a background, white, cream, whatever, and generally not one shade of blue, but probably, I don't know, Eight, eight or 10 shades of blue. You could do it in, in, in specifically two colors, but that would be, you know, be kind of boring. No offense to anybody that's done one, but you want to have, you always really want to have lights, darks, mediums, and that to, to, to give some interest to your quilt. So you could do that with two colors, and then you wouldn't notice the difference in the block so much as you would the colors. So you could have, um, a piece of plain fabric here, and then some other colors. So you could take all of the stuff that we've done in the book so far, make some, put them in a bucket, and then come back and put them all together in, in any any form of variation that you want. So hopefully that, that makes sense. So I thought that we'll make it a little quicker tonight. And I wanted to say all of that fairly quickly, and I hope I wasn't going too fast. In case my um, in case my stream gets disrupted, and we're three quarters of the way through, okay, I'm not getting the warning anymore. So maybe it was mad at me for playing my music too long. You know, it was, it, that's kind of static to the to the to YouTube, I guess. Uh, anyways, we'll do this block tonight, and I'm just gonna make the center a square a, a square piece of fabric rather than do this. So you can put anything here. This could be a fussy cut. This could be a, um, an embroidery, any, anything like that, that, that you wanna put in this area. If I'm gonna do a, an embroidery, 
I'm going to embroider before I cut it to be in the square. Before, uh, just in case you you don't want to worry about exact placement. You don't you won't hit, your hoop will be bigger than your fabric, and you really as much as everyone tells you they don't hoop their fabric. That's that's nice for them, but you really should hoop your fabric when you can when you embroider. It's the it's it's just the better thing to do. So. Uh, and then you could you could have uh, this type of block in five or six or ten different places, and it's always the same, the same color. And then surround it with um, little little patches of other 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 blocks. So we're going to get started, and we're going to cut enough for four flying geese. So let me put all this other stuff away or you can have this could be in the center um, if you make if you make the center of this a so, the solid green and I think then that's I think that's the Ohio star so then it would really look more like a star to have less movement so I'm gonna I'm just gonna put another color in here and fussy cut just means that you're you want a certain part of the fabric, whatever little picture might be on the fabric, you want it in the center of this block. We could do an applique or whatever. Okay, so let me set these aside. And I'm going to go ahead. So we're going to need to do four flying geese, one large square, just a plain square here, and then four smaller squares. So we know our smaller squares are half the size of our big square. So let me just set this aside, and we'll look in our book. So of course the square is right here. So we want the four and a half inch square die. So let's get that out first. So the four and a half. I have to look on my thing. So it's this one right here, and. I've got my four corners, so that's going to be, oh, let me move this. I'm going to turn my page. So here's my smaller squares. That's a two and a half inch square. So that's the third one down. Just getting my drawer out of the way. So I'm just going to set that there for now. I'm going to put this down. And remember, this center is just going to be a square. Oh, I don't need that. So let's get our squares done first. So this is our center. And this is our four corners. OK? So my center I got my, uh, I call it my tin. I got my tin pretty flat, but my um, plastic, you know, the, I'll show you in a second, the plastic shim, I don't know, I think I'm going to try and soak that in hot water. Hi, Rhonda. Oh, there's the hand. She give, he, Rhonda's giving me the hand. So, now if I, if I had the big Gemini out, I could leave this hanging down, but I got the I got the the jun juniors out today. So I'm just gonna cut that out of the way. And I am gonna well my seam my um salvage edge is over is over here. So I just gotta make sure I stay away from it. So, so this four and a half inch one kind of takes up a takes up a lot of the plate, doesn't it? Oh, you can't see it. Hold on, let me push this back. It keeps sliding forward on me. There we go. So now I need to have I got four corners, so I need four of these. And Um, I was going to use my chicken fabric, but I'm not sure if I've got enough for that. Who knows what this is going to look like now? Let's see. 
I should have made my chicken fabric my center, shouldn't I have? Let's do that. Let's switch it up here a second. Let's take chicken. Oh, it's a bear. I, thought, I keep thinking it's a chicken. It's a, it's a, I keep thinking it's a chicken, but see, it's actually a bear. Doesn't it look like a chicken from back here? Tell me it does. Hi, Cindy. All right, so let's do this again. I'm making a, I'm making a mess of it already. Doesn't seem like I made, I, I uh, thought about it ahead of time. So if I was going to fussy cut this and I wanted to have, I was going to say three chickens, three chickens in the middle. Um, just trying to decide if I really want to even do that. So if you're on the big gem now, you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have, you'd have a much bigger plate. You wouldn't have to cut all that off. Okay. Oh, thanks, Rose. Thanks for sticking up for me there. Did you see it? When it's up close, it really, it really is a bear. It looks like, I don't know, like a turkey ready to go into the oven. Okay, and then I need, I need four of these. And remember, they're square, so I don't have to worry so much where the straight of grain is. Because every side is, one of the sides is going to be straight of grain. There's no angles here. So I took two two fabrics and and um, folded each fabric twice. And I have to turn I have to turn this towards me so I can see. And I'm not not falling off the plate anywhere. Okay, so this is, is that, that's pretty straight con considered what I had earlier, but it is, um, it is getting a little cracky, a little cracky. So if it can't hurt, I'm going to soak it in hot water and see if I can flatten it out. I'll, I'll let you know how that works out. So you've got yours already. So it's one four and a half inch square and four um two and a half inch squares so let's get them cut That was a lot of cracking. Okay, so there's my four squares and my one square. So that's going to go here. And then my four corners are here. Okay, so we don't need our four and a half inch. We don't need either one of these dies again. So you can put yours away. I'm going to just set mine aside. My tape stuck to my fingers. I think it was trying to tell me it, I can use it again. Okay, now that I change now that I change that up, now we have to have our flying geese. Oh. My little snowman fell down.
Okay, so now we're going to have our flying geese. So if we look in our book, we need the four and a half inch quarter square triangle and the two and a half half square. So let's get the quarter square tri triangle first. And I want the four and a half. Oops, see, I had my had my paper in wrong. <clears throat> four and a half. And if you always want to be sure, you just kind of hold it to that and go, yep, that's the right one. And I want my two and a half half square. So make sure you have your half square, two and a half. Oh, look, catch me not. I didn't put my dies away earlier. Okay, so I want to make sure I'm on the I'm on the smaller side, and I want the middle one. Okay, so I need four of the bigger triangle. Now remember, this part is to the outside. So this part on the quarter square triangle, I can feel a piece of tape there. The long side needs to be on the straight of grain. Where on this one, the sh one of the shorter sides needs to be on the straight of grain. Because we always want to think about Can you see it okay? There we go. So the flying geese is going to be this way. Okay, we're looking at this one right here. Oh, let me get these out of the way. We're looking at this guy right here. So the long side right here is to the outside of the block. So that needs to be straight of grain so it doesn't stretch. And the short side, until this unit is sewn together, now you go by this, this is to the outside. So we're making sure that we're stitching together our bias cut. At the, the, is that 90 or 45? I never can remember. Oh. Oh, Rhonda, that's cool. You got a little turkey leg, a little chicken leg. Oh, and then you had a chicken. It's a big chicken. <laughs> it's a chicken leg. <laughs> now, it looks like a big chicken to me. Anyway, um, we want to make sure what, so this we're going to call this our unit. It could be a block, but we're going to call a unit because it's part of a bunch of units to make a block. So we want to make sure that our, that the unit has on the outside has make sure the fabric's not on the stretchy side. Okay? After a while you get you get used to it after a while. And that could make a difference in how your block turns out when you sew it because if you've got the stretchy side out here or out here it's going to stretch a little bit when you're lining up to the next piece or, or next unit. So, okay, so I guess I'm going to have chicken, I'm going to have chicken flying geese. <laughs> but, well, maybe I'm not. I might not have enough fabric for that. No, I only got two there. All righty. Now I have to give that some thought. Now, bear with me a second. I got more chickens where that came from. So let me just give a little quick press. So I was putting the yellow in the center until we were talking about fussy cutting, and then I wanted to show you that, and, you know, we went all down. We went downhill from there. Okay, so I got to find my straight of grain. So this is my straight of grain here.
So. And I got to watch underneath. Make sure you, when you fold, you watch underneath because my, my fabric underneath was totally in a different place. And let's see. Uh, just short. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Maybe it'll make it. Oh, it's going to make it. I got enough. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put that on there like that. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to run this one through. If you have the bigger Gemini, you can, you can, uh, you know, load your whole plate up. So you're either running through with me or um, you're you're going to load up your bigger plate, your bigger plates. Okay, see, I take more tape off and I had pieces already done. So here's my, my four. Oh, check that out. Now, see, I fussy cut this one really well. It's the only one. Got that? Got that uh, chicken right in the middle. Okay, now we need two, four, six, eight of the half square triangle. So I'm going to set this out of the way. Okay. Where is it? Someone's got, oh, here it is. Yeah, don't set things down where it's busy. Okay, so now I'll use this fabric. And I'm going to be this way. And I need eight. So I can do, oops, sorry. So I can do four and then turn it and do another four. And I'm just going to fold this in and tape it down because it's hanging out the side and it's not anywhere near where I'm where my um, die is so I just want to hold it down and then here's my die okay so let's get that cut So I'm gonna leave everything still taped. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna take this four out. Turn my die around. Tape it again. So I've just gone opposite, so I still have my straighter grain the same way. This is just stay taped like it was before. 
turn my I hadn't turned my um, plate over in a bit. Okay. So there's my other four. You're gonna put your, you're gonna put your you're putting your dies away. I've got mine set right here all together. Like I said, I wanna I wanna move along only so that in case we get in case we get uh, lost from each other. In case we get separated in the crowd. Okay, so we're going to set everything up. Am I all in the picture there? Pretty good. My four corners. There, I can come over further. Yeah, we all there. We're all in the picture now. Oh, where'd my other goose go? Oh, chicken goose. My chicken goose. And remember, I said before, even if you think you know where everything goes, I would still do this anyway, just in case. And when you do this, you can decide maybe you won't like it. And then you, before you sew it, you can you can change your mind. Because you're allowed to change you're allowed to change your mind. And in the schoolhouse, you can change your mind. Now well, that's not so bad. Okay, so this is going to be one column. And this is another. So the first thing we're going to do, let me get some pins here. So I just need four pins. So because the flying geese are all the same, we can go ahead and string piece our flying geese. So I'm going to just flip. This one. Put the pin in. I'm going to flip. This one, so you know, I'm flipping the same side on all of them. It is, it is a good idea to have them all the same. So if you're going to do the right side first, do all the right sides. If you're going to do the left side first, do all the left sides. Get some of this stuff out of the way here. We got the little baby machine today. So um, don't forget we're using the Microtex. Doesn't matter what machine I'm on, I'm using the same needle. I'm using the Microtex 70. I have more than one pedal on the floor, so I, I I hit the wrong pedal, and nothing happens. Oh, 
And I could have gone around, but he's, he's down underneath. There we go. I don't have any I don't have any foot control to cut my thread. Isn't that horrible? Okay, so I'm just gonna just cut them and cut them and put them back where they were. And we're going to go ahead and um, use our roller press. And remember, the dark is on top, so the little piece is on top. Just give that a press. And normally at this point, once I laid it out and saw how it all went, I would have just taken all my flying geese stuff and um just put it all together so let me let me do that like i like i like i would because otherwise you get things all over the place but i always i do lay it out to make sure that i like it as much as i thought i did So I can I can lay my geese right here or down here. I'll do it down here where you can see. And I've got my other little pile. And in case you're not sure, God, they all want to stick together. Just lay it like that and then flip it over. Because now this corner is going to go over that one, and that's why we want to make sure we we press it before we put it on and I know no iron but it but if you're going to iron behind my back just do a quick just that's all you need Shh, and that's it you like my sound effects and so this should line up perfectly so I can pick this one up Wrong pedal again. Get my next one. Oh, can you see me okay? Line it up, flip it over, and the ends are gonna match. Both ends will match. And I'm starting from the um the top of the geese. I'm starting from, oh, let me push this out of the way. I'm starting to sew from up here. I don't have any pivot. I don't have any automatic thread cutter. Oh, so tough. Is anybody stitching along? So you notice I always line it up. I don't say, oh, yeah, it goes this way. I always line it up before I flip it over. I don't trust myself.
Okay, so we can cut these guys apart. Let me get my mess out of your out of your way again. So we're gonna go ahead and press this side open. And I just put a crease in mine, so I am gonna take it over to my little iron. Or look, I can bring my little iron up to you. Hey, you see, I had none of this. I'm going to flip that up. I could be a good a good doobie and set the scene, then flip it. I know I turned my iron a little bit, didn't I? So every time I'm moving, I'm, I'm lifting up just a tad. You might not see that. The little lion is steaming today. Okay, so when we stitch across here, I want to show you this to you well. Hopefully I can give me give me a second to get it to tune in. We're going to be stitching across right where the two seams um, intersect. So now let's set this all up. So we have our geese flying in the right direction. With our four corner, oh, let me, uh, let me get some stuff out of the way here again. There we go. So we want to make sure all our geese points are facing in because that's what that's what makes the star. See it? So if I turned it this way, look, I'd have a I'd have a square and a square. That's pretty cool. And you know, it's your block. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so now when we stitch them, everybody with me so far? Now when we stitch these, we aren't going to clip our threads, okay? So we're going to, we're going to, this is column A, column B, column C. So we're going to do the old flip the page. Put a pin in on the side that we're supposed to sew on. And it doesn't have to be perfectly lined up. You can line it up um, at the machine. I'm going to go, this is row two, column B, flipping it over just like I was turning the page in the book. Put a pin in on the side. And I'm not going to pin right at this edge because that seam is right there. And then my last one I'm flipping. Oh, can you see it? This guy keeps slipping down on me. Okay. Now, we don't have to worry about lining up this or stitching for this seam allowance here because we're coming down this side. It is here. 
and it's under and it's underneath. So I'm trying to think of how you could do that. Can't do it that way. So we're not gonna flip it over. We're just gonna we're just gonna decide that we're living right and it's gonna work out just fine. But if it really worries you, just do this one, stop, flip this over, and don't connect them all. I'm just gonna connect them all. So when I come over to the machine, I'm just gonna make sure that I really, really have it straight. Okay, and then I'm gonna I'm I'm still connected with this one. See me here. I'm still connected. I'm gonna bring this one over. I'm still leaving the pin in. Once I get over here and I'm in sewing position, then I can get my two pieces lined up properly. And then my last one, and I'm still connected. Oh, I took my pin out before I should have. But I'm coming over. Making sure everything's lined up. Uh, top, side, bottom. I'm going to leave everybody connected. And I'm just going to open it up and and I'm I'm going to before I press any seam allowance, I'm going to look and see what my options are. So, because I have a plain unit, paint plain square here, I really want to press my seam allowance towards that nice plain area. Makes it nice because this is plain and I need to go in the opposite direction. And then I'm going opposite back again. So this one's right, left, right. And it works out perfect because the seam allowance is going towards the least busy area of seams. There's no seams in here where there's a seam here. The same with this one. I got two seams coming in here. So I'm pushing my seam allowance it automatically wants to go to the right because it wants to go the, the path of least resistance. And I'm going to move over. If I should mention, if you're a, a, a good doobie, before you stitch your, your flying geese, and they do make a flying geese ruler, but, and because I know I took a little, I took a leaner um, seam allowance, so I, I had a little extra, and I noticed it when I was sewing this part. So what I want to make sure of is at this top, from this point up, should be a quarter of an inch. I'll have to uh, get my flying geese ruler out next time. So this is four and a half, so my point Right here, the point, the point of the geese, oh, this one, the point of the geese should be on the two and a quarter, right? Four and a half, half of that, two and a quarter, okay? I should be nice and straight here, here, here. I just got a little extra right there. And, and, um, and that happens. I just got a sliver, I'll show you. Look, I just, I just had that little sliver. Little, little teeny piece. Don't get too carried away with your trimming because I've seen people trim and then trim and then trim and next thing you know, exactly. They've, they've trimmed it off. 
And it's possible that you won't have the quarter inch. We're not perfect sewers. So just try to practice at it because you want it to come out so that when you stitch it, you don't cut your point out off. Will that happen? Of course it'll happen. Don't be so don't be so hard on yourself. So column A, column B, now we're at column C. And now we know this is only going to go one way together. So you notice when I when I put B over A, I picked one up at a time and stitched it, but I kept I got them connected. Now this has got to be all picked up at the same time. So I got to flip and pin all three before I move anything, which is generally I do that. I flip them all anyway, but just in case you weren't, now you now you actually have to. Make sure your point is facing in. You guys still with me? Now make sure nobody went to bed before the time was up. And then flip the last one. Okay. So now when I pick this up, it's it's all coming at the same time, but it's all hooked together in the order it needs to be. Oh, hey, Rose, you're still there? Good job. Thanks. We had snow off and on today. Rose, how about you? What'd you have? And don't worry about if this twists around because as it comes up to the machine for its turn to go, um, you can get it in order. Rhonda, you had snow too? Oh, hey, Cindy, you're still with us? Good. Am I the, I, I think, though, I think I'm the only one stitching. I feel like I'm stitching alone today. That's all right. You guys are all with me in spirit. So see when the next one, when I, when it came time to, as it, as the thread hooks along and everything pulls along, it just comes up. It comes up where it's supposed to. Just make sure that this guy, my guy, he was folded under. Make sure he doesn't, make sure column A and column B are where you can see the little fellas. Yeah, Rhonda, we just had snow off and on too. That was enough. I keep hitting that pedal, nothing's happening. Okay. So again, we got to pay attention to our seam allowance. I'm telling you, I keep sneaking down. Get back there. And it's easy again. We're going to go towards the plain uh, unit. So that has to be on top. So this one's not on top. So if I flip this, it wants to go that way. So I'm just going to reach underneath with my fingers here and just push it because it doesn't take much coaxing for it to go in that direction because there's no resistance there. And then this one again. So this one's right, left, right. Oh, Rose, you had a beautiful sunny day. Yeah, you probably don't want to tell us what the temperature was. We'll all be crying before we go to bed. Okay. Now I definitely wouldn't take this over to the um, to the iron. Okay. I'm just gonna give you a second in case anybody is stitching along. Have a drink of my tea. So 
sorry if you heard me slurp. Okay, so column A, column B, column C, everybody's hooked together. They're all, everyone's contained, so you can't go wrong now. It may be a could, but I don't think so. So I'm just gonna fold this one down. So row one on top of row two. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I get those seams. So see, this seam is going to the left. This seam is going to the right. That sounds like the hokey pokey. I'm feeling down here to make sure that seam is straight the whole way down. I'm gonna pin half inch or so past the seam allowance. And I wanna make sure I'm lined up along the side as well as here. So I'm gonna stick this pin down here so I know that this this won't move on me now. And I'm gonna pick it up for my next seam allowance. And then because you chain pieced it together, they're pretty they're pretty close to where they need to be. So again I'm gonna go about a half inch past and then I'm gonna set it back down because I wanna make sure this is lined up. I don't wanna have it like, let's see if I can show you. I don't wanna have it like that because I know now this won't sew right. So I'm even this way and even this way. And we can go ahead and stick a pin further down just to keep everybody, keep everybody in their spot. Okay, I'm not gonna pin here, and I think you guys, most of you that follow along know, there's no sense in putting a pin here because I gotta take it out immediately. So I would rather pin where I don't have to take it out, pull it out, and it shifts my fabric or whatever. This corner isn't gonna move because I'm pinned here and I'm pinned here. There's nowhere for this corner to go. All right, so I've got, I can't, can you see it? I've got, I've got Caspian's kid scene guide on here, so I can't get my, I can't get my pin up and over. So I'm going to hold my fingers down where that seam allowance is, but you're going to leave your pin in because you're not going to have the kid's seam guide there. And I'm going to stop. I don't have pivot, but I'm going to stop and lift my foot with my lever back here, or lever, whichever way you say it, because my seam allowance is facing towards the back of the machine, and, and the presser foot was pushing it back towards me. And I'm just going to stop, make sure that the underneath fabric is lined up with the top one, so everybody's playing nice. And again, I've got to take that pin out. And I can feel my seam. My seam doesn't feel right. I can, you can feel it when, it, when it's uh, bunching up. Oh, and what happened was my seam allowance under, underneath, my last seam allowance underneath, was supposed to be facing to the back of the machine, and as it was coming forward, it flipped it back. So both seam allowances are on top of each other because I'm going to make sure that I feel this and stays nice and flat up as far as I can. And I could feel I had a big bump there. And I'm going to stop and make sure I've got my corner nice. You know, is everything going to come out perfectly lined up? No, probably not. We just try to do our best. So I'm going to take my two pins out.
and I will I will give that a little press. And then I'll flip it open. But you notice I'm not going out at my edges. I'm just staying right near that seam allowance. Okay, now we have the bottom to do. So we're just going to flip it up. And I just turn it around. <clears throat> we don't have to work on it upside down just because it's upside down. And I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to make sure my seam allowances are lined up. And my fabric needs to come down just a tad. I'm going to put a pin here. You know, when you're home doing this by yourself, it, it doesn't take as long as it does for me yakking and telling you what I'm doing and trying to show it. And okay, now. I have to look because my, <clears throat> excuse me, my um, my square fabric isn't coming out as far. And that could be because remember, I should have trimmed my flying geese before I put them in. So be sure after you stitch, after you stitch your flying geese, be sure to give them a little trim. Measure, well, if they need a trim, measure them and see if they need a trim. And again, you wouldn't be taking your pin out yet. I just have this contraption in my way and it sticks on. I don't want to really unstick it. Well, my, my presser foot flipped my seam allowance up. pins in the way again and I'm, I'm going to double check make sure my underneath seam isn't my underneath seam is facing that way and it keeps wanting to flip towards me so I gotta I gotta get under just lift the whole see how I'm lifting the whole thing up just to check to make sure it's behaving itself So if you have a machine that doesn't have a thread cutter, make sure you always bring your needle all the way up, turning your wheel that's over on the right side of your machine. That way, when you start sewing again, if your needle's already all the way up when you cut it, it won't go up and pull your thread out of the needle. So if I left my needle, if I left the needle further down, when I go to sew, the the take up lever, the take up lever that has the thread on it goes up and down. That take up lever goes up, it's going to pull the thread out of your needle. Just a little side, side info for you. Okay, so let me give that a little press. So look, we got the block all done. It's only eight o'clock. How's that? Just think if we did a block a week, we'd have uh, how many weeks? 52? I wouldn't mind doing a block of the week and actually getting it 
and getting it done. And I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to look here. And I think, so you see how nice and flat that sits because it's going away from the point. This one is kind of, can you see? Because the seam is going back on that. So the, the problem being is if we flip this way, we flip this way, now we're going over this seam allowance. So we have a couple options and I think we'll take the easiest one and we'll press this seam open and try that. So open means one fabric is on the left and the other side of the seam is on the right. And you really have to kind of finger press it first because you know it's a quarter inch seam and mine's even scantier than that. But let's see how that works out. See if I can get in there without setting my table on fire here. Melting, without melting anything. So can you see how the seam allowance is open? Because you can see the you can see the fabric. So let's try this side. Doing this one-handed. Well, I can tell you, I took a I took a tiny seam allowance. So in the real world, in your sewing room, when you start sewing for the day. You want to take two, two, um, oh, I got to cut that thread open. You want to take two three and a half inch squares, um, seam them together on one side, press them, and you should measure across and it should be six and a half. That way you know your seam allowance is correct. It, it isn't about measuring the seam allowance because that won't help you because it depends on the thread, the needle, the fabric. You know, how much, if you have a thicker fabric, when it when you press it over to, when you press your unit over to one side, there's more fabric in that fold over than if it was a thinner fabric. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'll show you this in a second. And then once you're all done, this should measure eight and a half. So you want to take your ruler and make sure you square it up so it's eight and a half. Look, I took my snips with me. I, I'd have never found them again. Okay, so see how the seam allowance is pressed open. And you're really, because it's a quarter inch seam allowance, and again, I said mine's even smaller than that. You really have to open it with your fingers first because trying to do it with the tip of your eye and you'll just, you'll go crazy. Plus you want to be careful so you want to kind of keep pressing because what you're going to do is you're going to start pushing these. And if you do, that's okay. Just come back, put it back where it belongs, and then press it down again. So let's see how our points are looking. Okay, so that's how your points should look. And I've got one. And remember I told you I didn't trim my flying geese and I should have. So see how I got more fabric up there? So this geese is a little longer than he should be. But it's okay. It looks pretty good in, in general. My chickens, my chickens look pretty good. Chicken bears, yeah, so you can see up close. It's a bear with a honey pot and a little bee. Make, I'm making everybody look so you can see it's not a chicken. <laughs> it's 
a chicken bear. You've seen that. It's like a buffalo wing. That's what it is. it's like a buffalo wing. It's a chicken bear. Okay, so then you would just uh, trim it up so that you get your eight and a half. And I can tell, remember I said that I that I um I did a scant seam allowance, a little scanter than I should have. So I actually have well, almost eight, almost eight and almost eight and three quarters. So I would I take a little off of each side. You still see chickens, Rose? <laughs> it's a chicken bear. <laughs> Okay, so that's today. So if you wanna, if you didn't, if you didn't stitch along, what we used was four and a half inch square in the center. We used the flying geese right out of the out of the book, and then two and a half inch squares on the corners. So four and a half inch die, two and a half inch die, and then your dies that you used for your flying geese. So if you want to draw yourself like a little, like a little tic-tac-toe almost, and just put two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, four and a half, and flying geese, flying geese, flying geese, flying geese. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay, so remember, after you do your flying geese, trim them or make sure that check to see if they need to be trimmed and it tells you in the in your sample book and those pages are still up on my uh, pay hip account and i believe i put the um the link for these pages are in the description um in the description of that video. So there was some last Thursday, there's a link last Thursday and there's a link the Thursday before. In case you didn't get them or you can you can find them in the Facebook post, but it would have been last Thursday and the Thursday before that one. And they're free, so go ahead and get them down. Yeah, trim them up, Rose, trim them up. You know, I, so Rose, I always do a scan. I shouldn't have scanned it as much as I did. And I couldn't, and, I, and normally I would do that two, three and a half inch squares or two, two and a half inch squares. If I said three, three and a half, I meant two. But if you go two and a half, two and a half, that would be four and a half when you sew them together. If you go three and a half, three and a half, it'll be six and a half when you sew it together. And you would just measure it with your ruler to make sure that it was the four and a half or six and a half, whatever it is. And and once you have that seam allowance right, you, you should be good to go. So if I had tested mine, see, I stayed a little away from this because I couldn't remember where I had set it. But if I had tested it, I would have known I could have butted, and I should have known that I could butt right up against this little uh, guy here. So whatever whatever way you're doing it, um, do that little test. It doesn't hurt to do that little test every time you sit down to do squares because we are our hands, our brains, our eyes are in a different mood each day. They got and they all got to work together. So do that quick little test. It'll save you a lot of crying later on. But square up as you go. So flying geese. Square them up, and that just means trim them so they're the proper size. Okay, if they're a little too small, that's okay. So, if this was a little too small, and this will be your last tip. So, if I'm sewing these two pieces together, and this one's a little too small, I'm going to bring it in, and I'm, I'll hold it up in a second. I'm going to bring it in that distance that it's too small. But when I figure out, when I have my guide or whatever I'm using to get my seam allowance, I'm going by the guy underneath that's the right distance. As long as it's within an eighth of an inch of this edge, you're okay. But if you find that you, if you have, and, and a lot of times I'll make one flying geese, the whole thing, and I'll measure it. Just to be sure I'm doing everything the way I'm supposed to, rather than do 10 of them and then find out 10 of them were wrong. If 
find out if the first one's good. It's, I'd sew my left and right on, press it, and measure it, and see if I'm good to go for the rest of my flying gaze. Okay? So thanks, Rhonda. Thanks, Cindy, Rose, Lynn, anybody else that joined us. Um, I don't know. I might, probably next week I might do a different block because I wanna I wanna expand our resource book a little bit. Uh, excuse me, a little bit. Um, so we'll figure something out. And if you do a block like this and you have nothing to put it in, make there's your pot, there's a pot holder, candle mat. Uh, mug rug, whatever you want it to be, or just stick it in your book with some notes. So thanks everyone for joining in. I'm so glad that the stream didn't uh, throw me back out again. Have a good rest of the week, and some of you, or hopefully all of you, I'll see you on uh, Saturday afternoon. I'm doing one more class, I believe, on the serger, a basic zipper bag. Um, I'll get that worked on tomorrow and throw a picture of it up on Facebook, and it, it'll be Saturday at 1. So I'll see you then, everybody, and thanks for joining.